Norman would have been proud of the pace set by the turbines on the opening leg. Roger and Ben Preston were first away, up the lagoon and into the river, but Mike Pooley was making up for his indiscretion on the WiMAC and passed the father and son combo to record fastest upstream time to the gorge bridge, despite the river conditions. We prefer it a bit lower because it's very hard to read at the moment because it's the colour. You can't see the bank, so it just makes it difficult. He took a channel on the north side, just above the bridge, and we were on the south side, and he sort of came out right beside us, so we kind of let him go and, and um, followed him. Dave Robinson was third into the river in CX666, carrying enough speed to ward off the always hard-charging Justin Hill. Gravel rash on the bottom of the boats was standard fare for everyone upstream, and the west coaster suffered a drop in speed and position. Oh, it's just a rock. It's all right though. It doesn't take much, does it? No, it doesn't. But we were f got to food and then came fifth. So it's just how quick it changes, eh? Justin Hill was lucky too, but suffering the same demise, but quicker CX to the top. Broke a girl bra as well. We're planting potatoes down below the bridge trying to find some good water, and yeah, as Bricky would say, we took some man channels, so. Friday's testing of his redesigned jet unit intake for Craig Robinson hadn't delivered the speed he was hoping, but out here on the river were things improving. Not yet, no. It's one of those things when small changes make big differences, but it's just finding the combination. Bricky, aka Wayne Boys, had a different issue, leaving the lagoon with a hiss and a roar, only to arrive at the top with a miss and more roar. <laughs> We were, we were starving for fuel, so we were struggling to keep going, and then, then the exhaust flew off and made a bit of noise. And Yeah, we, we managed to get to the top, but only just. In his first time behind the race wheel in 27 years, Simon Bagri did his dad proud, bringing the second and third generation into lunch and ahead of some of the competition with a smile on his face. It was really, it was really good, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it was amazing. Yeah, loved it, loved it. Yeah, um, I see why Dad enjoyed it so much. <laughs> Silverback Racing was fourth to the top in the big block Chev, Rob Pooley avoiding the pressure waves he warned of pre-race. But Riley Smith learned firsthand about those pressure waves, surrendering a possible class lead to an always fast Southern FX driver, Greg Wilson. What's happened? Oh, I had a bit of a pressure wave on the way up. Pulled it down and hit the water and wing went under, but it's all good. The return leg nearly ended before it started for Roger Preston when he buttoned off the gas too quickly at displacement, sending the bubbling gorge water straight down the turbine. The technical term is a flame out. The result shuts down the engine and valuable time is lost, cooling it down to attempt a restart. Ben and Roger got going, but the boat wasn't right, continuing to backfire on deceleration until Roger worked out he had to keep his foot flat. That worked until the fire went out for one final time. And the race boat came to a rest, unceremoniously dumped up a bank. Aidan Flett had sorted his issues with speed after removing the packers under the grill and by his own admission was flying, finally. It was a bit too literal though, after kiting off a rock jettisoning boat and crew out of the river in spectacular style. Downstream river eating at speed was a huge challenge. The fight in FX had been mere seconds with Greg Wilson leading the way. Well, most of the way. We saw him not far from the top and he was pushing and probably should have eased off but we didn't and we had CX boats behind us and no one passed us but we got over way over to the right before the pylons and we were in some real ugly stuff. Event organiser and CX competitor Byron Campbell made the most of the slower moving elder statesman of river racing and charged on downstream to record a credible third in class ahead of boat 185 Richie Foster. Who, like Grant Perry, had consistent passes up and down the Rakaia in the largest competitor field. But even our champion of the shallows wasn't exempt from the need for some quick thinking today. CX class leader Justin Hill using all his skill to keep aftershock in whatever channels he could find at speed to clinch second outright and a class win ahead of Dave Robinson. So we found a few uh, channels which weren't ideal and a few dry landers to get back in the main flow, but it was good racing, so 
No winner's prize for Bagri and Son, but the grins said it all. Returning to the top of the leaderboard, Mike Pooley, definitely the man to beat for the past season. Good, no, we had a good run down, a couple of wee mishaps, but no, it was good. Very hard reading and lots of pressure waves.